And this is Tech Talk Radio. I'm Andy Taylor. I'm Slick. And I'm Justin. Welcome and to Tech Talk Radio. There you go. We're the show that talks about computers. Technology. And Minecraft. <laughs> oh, I mean the internet. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> It's like a game of password. Uh, yeah, we're, we're like waiting. Is he in? Is he in? Does he know it? Uh, you know, are you wearing a Seahawks ha hat or is that a Chargers hat? That's a Chargers hat, man. Know yeah. your NFL logos. Give me your man card. Uh, for being down there in uh, San Diego, I guess you'd have to wear a Chargers hat. If I wore a Seahawks hat, I probably wouldn't be alive right now. In San Diego. <laughs> we can remember I'm not wearing my glasses, so I can't see a damn thing. You look. Uh, like there we go. <laughs> Anyway, um, all right, well, cool. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff today in a quick 45-minute broadcast, but uh, I think the probably the first thing is uh, i got to ask Slick. Slick, have you seen the new Verizon commercial? The, uh, the one where the kid... No. You've got to see... The, it's a commercial where the kid walks into a Verizon store, and he's got this belt, and the belt has every bit of technology invented over the last 10 years, including... A uh, e-reader, oh, a I've game seen this. device. That is you now, Justin. You haven't met Slick in person yet. That no. is Slick. Seriously. Oh, really? Oh my! He makes. He sounds like uh, from the old west. You know, like a guy walking in with the old west, the chains yeah. and everything else. He's got a key. Do you have your key tags around you right now, Slick? Yeah. He wears the key <laughs> chains with all the USB. And I swear to God, the first thing out of uh, Gloria's mouth, we're watching the commercials. That's Slick. <laughs> <laughs> Me, make me reach for the 64 gig or the 84 gig flash drive. <laughs> That's <laughs> funny. That's funny. That was uh, that is a funny spot. You gotta you gotta look for that on uh, Verizon Wireless. It's all about their their cell phones and how they can kind of do everything and do all of that. Which brings me to the question: Is and now you're not on Verizon where you're at, right, Slick? That's correct. I'm on Sprint. Yeah. How has the connection been for Sprint? Um, spotty on the edges of town, as well as within certain buildings. I, I expected much better service from Sprint, but uh, too much to my surprise. Uh -uh. Yeah. Now, what about you, Justin? You're in a Verizon area, right? Uh, no, actually. Well, I mean, Verizon's around here, but I'm actually using uh, AT and T myself because I got the iPhone. So, uh -huh. but yeah, I mean, we had all the coverage, but yeah, I'm a, I'm an AT and T uh, <clears throat> customer, I guess. Now, be, <laughs> being in uh, San Diego, don't they have uh, a wider dispersal of four G? Or, or, you know, other technologies to make it faster? Yes. I mean, they have the 4G coverage in San Diego, 4G LTE, but I just, I haven't, uh, I haven't used it. A couple of the guys we work with actually have the, the, the 4G phones, and I mean, it's great. It's, it's, the speed is awesome. That's what I, I want to wonder. Uh, I'm kind of wondering because I'm actually, we now have 4G in Tucson. Uh, only a certain part. It's like I, uh, Interstate 10 to Harrison Road, and I mean, it's a, it's, it's a small blanket of an area where you get the 4G LTE speeds. My phone, I've got the Fascinate from Verizon, does not get, uh, is not in a 4G area, but I do have the Zoom tablet that I'm still using. So I'm wondering, hmm. is, I would think, isn't that going to be 4G? I would think it would be. I thought, I thought the Zoom tablet was going to be a 4G. Ooh. So next time in that area, I've got to fire that up. I didn't fire it up the other day because they just started this a couple days ago. So, by the way, just so you know, Andy, I, I, I'm always in those areas pretty much daily throughout the week. So, you know, just, <laughs> you, I'm just I, you know, if you need someone can, to test I'll, out the technology. I'll ask my me. boss if you can have it for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they'll let you. I'm, and I'm sure I'll get it back to him within a reasonable amount of time. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure, sure. that will happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually funny because I, I went to give it back to him the other day, and uh, we got a nice little cover from Verizon. Uh, it's a plastic cover. It's, it's, it's kind of flimsy, but it works. And, uh, and it actually, the, one of the best inventions in the world, it comes from, uh, I believe it's Griffin. It's a, it looks like a pen, and it's got a soft little tip at the end. And you use that for touching the screen so you don't have fingerprints all over the screen. Oh, yeah, they make those for the iPad and stuff. Great invention. If you don't have one, you got to use one. Because Actually, I got a three pack of them from Hong Kong for like three ninety nine on eBay. Really? We paid twelve bucks for this thing. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the only my only problem with it with the touch with the pens uh, for like the the touch pads, especially. I mean, I haven't used any other touch pads, but for the iPad, they say that you can you can use it for writing uh, to to take notes. The that it's like writing with a giant marker. And trying to you know use cursive or whatever you want to use, it doesn't have the ability to be fine print, um, and it's not as good as using your finger. You can. Uh, I thought there was one out there that actually had the type of point like a pencil, where it'd be really small like a pencil. Right. But 
the iPad has to have a certain uh, area of the screen covered before it'll detect it as as being a, a pen or a writing device. So, and it's got to be electro sensitive or something, kind of like your finger is, I guess. Yeah. That's the only way. So you can you could put like an eraser or something on there, and it's not going to touch it. It's not going to do anything. So it's got to be a special type of material. It's got to be certain width in order to make it work. And I just that's why I didn't like the pens all that much. Have you tried the keyboard for that yet? I mean, uh, the <clears throat> the keyboard no, I you have plug not. in. No, I have not. I'm thinking that would be kind of a cool thing, but then it defeats the whole purpose of uh, not using a you know a, uh, an actual PC <laughs> at that point. You're uh, true. going away from the tablet. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, you turn it into a PC, but. I don't know. Maybe maybe I give it a shot. I mean, I I use the keyboard on screen. That's how I take my notes. I just flip my iPad around, put it in this little stand, and then just have it kind of sitting like at the angle of the keyboard sits, and I just start there and type my notes if I need to use it. So, right, that's what I do. Oh well, cool. Oh, and speaking of uh, tablets and PCs, the big news this week: HP deciding to uh, get rid of its uh, and spin off its uh, computer division and and basically get out of the phone business. Um, I think this is a big announcement that took a lot of people. By surprise, but you know, the, I think the big surprise was after saying why they were doing it, stockholders uh, d- ended up with a little confidence and ended up uh, driving the stock down, the stock price down for HP, which is uh, not a good thing in today's economy. Yeah, yeah, I don't care about that. Here's what I care about. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Come on, tell, slick, tell us how you really much feel. money you're making. To hell with them. It's all about me. Um, <laughs> the, I don't know if you guys have been, I've been, I've been waiting to tell you about this. And I almost, I want, I was, uh, man, I was so close to waking you up, Andy, last night. Man, so close. Um, I've been following the HP touchpad story. Have you? No, I have not. All I heard is the news. And I remember thinking, wait, what does this mean? You know, uh, I, I went ahead and went online. I tried to get some information as far as what does this mean for HP? What does this mean for those people who have the laptops, the desktops? Uh, where, where's it going to go from there? Okay. About 6 o'clock our time yesterday evening, it, it was found on um, uh, Best Buy. I think it's Best Buy's website in, uh, in, Can- in Canada. Canada? <laughs> Canada? Uh, <laughs> I'm a Canadian, eh? Just, go, just go with it. <laughs> look, at my, look at my dark socks, eh? <laughs> but a mistake had been made to where that and I think another website called Future Shop where all of a sudden the HP touchpad, the 16 gigabyte HP touchpads were $99. Wow. <laughs> yeah, there's more. So, so then we started chatting, you know, uh, on the internet about, okay, well, is that a glitch? Is it a mistake? Is it coming? Da-da-da. Then someone supposedly found text from a memo that left HP to go to their retailer saying, uh, in essence, hey, we're about to discount the, the uh, touchpad down to $99. Get ready. Here we go. So mm-hmm. about nine o'clock yesterday evening our time. Now the rumors really start to get some traction. Look like it's for real, for real, for real, because all of a for sudden, real? for for real, <laughs> so because, shizzle uh, for real. <laughs> but, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, we're talking Walmart. We're talking Office Depot, Office Max, Best Buy. And I'm talking in America now. Um, all you know, and and people in Canada are able to now. Some people are saying, yeah, I was able to pick one up for ninety nine bucks. Or a couple for ninety nine bucks, you know, in, in American money. Sure enough, after midnight, it took a while because I mean, I was watching the HP website, I was watching all the websites, checking the check Amazon dot com. It was like, hey, there's some talk here that Amazon's going to change their pricing. About one a.m. our time, I noticed the first. It was after one a.m. our time, I noticed the first indication of it. It was on Office Depot dot com. The touchpad, the sixty gigabyte, went from what was it three three ninety nine or whatever it was down to one twenty nine. Oh, within wow. a couple of hours, out of stock. Yeah. Whoa! So people it's, are still buying them. Yeah. Well, if you look at Twitter, I've been watching the Twitter feeds all morning long. Some people have been able to get them. Some people not. One guy was bright because I also on the I think it's OfficeDepot.com website. They they limited it to two, two per mm-hmm. customer. So he bought two sixteen gigabyte. HP touchpads and two 32 gigabyte HP oh, touchpads. Wow. The 32s were going for 150 dollars. Now Gosh. people are scrambling nationwide, trying to get to stores, trying to find out when they open, trying to find out if Amazon.com is going to sell them. So far, I've had no luck with Amazon.com, Staples.com, um, OfficeMax.com, Walmart.com. Walmart.com changed. I watched them actually do the live change. Um, 
because I called and and uh, the 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 Walmart down the road for me here didn't want to talk to me about it. Didn't want to talk about it. Right. <clears throat> but I did notice on two other WalMarts in town that it said, you know, in stock at the store. Now, no longer in stock at the store. The only place I can find in stock at the store in the state of Arizona at this time is Benson, Arizona. In ben- Benson, I, I would drive to Benson for that. Yeah, it's only about an hour and a half. So I don't know if you saw my Facebook half price for it. Yeah, I've been yeah. trying to find people that are actually because I can actually uh, today I can right now at this moment I can actually afford a ninety nine dollar version. So I'm trying to find Ooh. out who's going to the store and if there's one there and can they pick me up once I can reimburse them. I really want one of these. I need this to replace my Palm TX and my Palm Life Drive. That it would too. Now what's going to happen with those? What's going to happen with these devices that you know Palm? Uh, they acquired Palm not too long ago. Are they getting rid of the Palm Pre? Are they getting rid of? Is that going to go away? Here's my answer. It's not official, but I know I know I'm sure I would bet my life on it. Yes, because uh, I was over at the Sprint store yesterday in regards to a Palm Pre and we were were discussing with the staff. So they they were swapping it out for a replacement. And it was like, hey, with the Palm Pre, when we get it, when it goes offline, when they take it out, they don't make it anymore. You know, what happens? Uh, You know, the phone breaks. Do we do we get the upgrade for free? What's going on? Yeah. And uh, they danced around that the entire question again. You know, they danced around it. But basically, if you have a Palm Pre and something goes wrong with it, and you have the contract and you got insurance or whatever it is, um, you you're probably not going to get a replacement Palm phone. You're going to get you know unless they have it in stock, which they do still have some in the warehouses. Right. Um, and you'll have to go to another phone, another manufacturer, another model. Or the now, or the uh, it would also be up to the uh, carrier then to provide a, another phone for you to use on their service. If right. you now bought it through some, their service. Here's some weird news, though, that I found just surfing around. In Europe, and I believe it's France, they're releasing the Palm Pre 3. <laughs> what? So uh, that's very interesting because we've t- been told it's their U.S. division. So mm-hmm. does that, do, well, have we said, no, they haven't really indicated whether it's just U.S. or, or Europe. Let's, let's talk about the fact that you have companies that do business such as Packard Bell is huge in Japan. Am I right, Justin, that Packard Bell was one of the big... I don't know if you remember when you were in Japan, wasn't Packard Bell one of the big manufacturers there? I, You know, to, to be completely honest, I never really heard a lot about Packard Bell in Japan. Yeah, but I, you could be very right. I, I don't know. There were so many manufacturers in Japan. I, I, don't, I don't know if Packard Bell was one of the big ones. Maybe even in Europe, too. Um, so, I, I don't know. The, the, I think the move... Uh, and again, it did shake up uh, the confidence of the company... I think the move was to get them away from the consumer model, which is very little, very little profit in that. I mean, really, after you take everything and you, you know, you you put all the costs involved, all the support involved uh, in that, uh, the the it's they're they're going to make very little profit. So I think their desire now is to do ser- the server market uh, and go after that market, similar to what isn't that what a- IBM did? Yeah, IBM is. You don't ever see IBMs anymore unless it's a server. Yeah, I mean, IBM's on the, on the professional side of things. Uh, you know, you think about the computer that, that wanted chess. That's an IBM computer, you know, all of that. You, you wonder if, uh, if that's, that's the strategy they're going after then. So, you know, all of these great HP desktops, these great HP designs, you know, uh, then what happens to its gaming division? You know, Voodoo. Are they giving up? Uh, we're not going to see the Blackbird computer anymore? You know, we have these great touch screens from HP. Are those going to go away? I mean, they haven't said that they're spinning off completely, right? Is that is that right, Ju- uh, Slick and Justin? I don't uh, think they're spinning off completely yeah. yet. They're cons- they're strongly considering it. Yes. Yeah, it's not, not official yet. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I I don't. I, I I'm kind of upset at the fact because I would like to have seen them continue to develop. Maybe even do something with Palm. That's what I think what we were hoping with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're kind of excited Did- that. The pre three, I just I just uh, checked the news here. The pre three is in the UK, so I, I said France, but it, it's in the UK is where the Palm pre three is now avail- available. Here's what I said in a in a Twitter post, and I I, I I'm, you know I, I truly believe this, and and I don't understand why they haven't maybe discussed it. The Palm OS, even though it's not advanced as the Web OS, the Palm OS is rock solid. It's proven. It did its job. Why not go back to the Palm OS? People love the Palm OS. Right. I hated the Web OS OS because it just it, it was just, you have Android and you have uh, you know Apple uh, and those were great. Then you have this Web OS that was like a little clunky and 
I just I couldn't find my way around it, and they wanted to charge for every, all the apps, and uh, or at least a lot of the apps I was seeing, and I said, nah, don't like it. That's what see, I, I heard. I, I, see, I disagree. I didn't like the Palm. I never did like the Palm OS. I, I always thought it was just clunky. Um, it wasn't speedy enough for me, and especially when it came out to having, you know, like at the time when I was using Palm OS, I think the other competitor was uh, the Microsoft, you know, the Windows CE or w- whatever you call it, and that just yeah. seemed to be a lot more responsive, a lot better to use, in my opinion. Okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna disagree yeah. with you and argue with you about it being, you know, slow and all that. I, you, you, valid points, valid points, mm-hmm. but it worked. Yeah, it did. True. Yeah, it did. All right, so if that's big. That was big news. What about the other news this week uh, re- regarding Google buying uh, Motorola Mobility? I mean, it's, 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 Ooh, that's going to piss a lot of people off. Twelve point five billion dollars that they said. Wait a minute, and you know, a lot of people are saying, "Well, they got it so they can test their uh, their operating system." I don't know if that's the case. Uh, you know, it's just to test something. I mean, Motorola makes the Zoom Tab. Yeah. They make. You know, they make phones, they make all kinds of devices. One, one, uh, I heard one uh, analyst say, well, if you think about it, they make uh, set-top boxes for a lot of the cable companies, Motorola. You see that everywhere. Uh, are we going to now turn on our TVs and see the Google logo? <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it, seriously. I've always said, you know, from the very beginning, if Google, if there's anybody that's going to be the Microsoft killer, it's going to be Google. Um, yeah, I, th- I don't think people are even looking at Microsoft as a contender in this. In this, they're looking at it a- as a direct, really a direct confrontation going up against Apple. Yeah, it, it's it's surprising. Look at ten years ago, and this is kind of changing it right there. But look at ten years ago when it was Microsoft was the king, and and Apple was just this little step you know stepchild um, that nobody really wanted or cared about anymore. They thought, ah, just kind of write them off, and then they in- introduced the iPod, and now look at Apple. The iPod, I mean, the iPhone. <clears throat> IPad. Well, the iPod is what's really saved Apple uh, c- completely. The the iPod gave them the the money that they needed to be able to introduce the new iMacs or just the iMac. Yeah, the new iMacs. iMacs led into more led into the iPhone. The iPhone just skyrocketed Apple, and you know, and, and just like I said, look at them now. I mean, nobody can touch them. I don't know. What do you think, uh, Slick? Uh, buying buying uh, Motorola is this uh, b- mobility their their division? Is this is this a good move for them? Is it a good move uh, for the consumer? I think you know. I think it was a good idea, but I agree with Justin. You know, it's gonna it's ticking off some people. You know, why not? It should be ticking off some people. Now, who's gonna want to make <laughs> Google Android phones now? That they're gonna be like, well, why are we even spending time making a phone for you, like <laughs> HTC or Sprint or whatever, whoever makes them, the other ones? Why are we gonna spend time making it when we know that you're not gonna use it? You're just gonna compete against us with your Motorola phones now. It's a good move for Google, but I think it's gonna alienate the rest of the people that that helped Android get into the market. Well, I think they should just be careful what what they do with it. Here, here's the thing: if if I if I were Google, would I buy Motorola? Yes. Would I still make the Android operating system and make it available to everybody else? Yes. But I would sit down with all the people who are convention and all that kind of stuff and go, listen. All right, here's the deal: tell me what you're working on. And I'll try not to compete with you, but if there's something <laughs> that that you're not, I mean, you're not even going to touch. I'm going to feel free to to put it out there, and if you want to catch up, that's that's your problem. You know, mm-hmm. if I move ahead in the technology because you won't, that's your problem. But I, I'll try not to hurt you as my friend. One of the yeah. things that bothered me about this whole thing uh, was okay. So you got HTC and you've got Samsung. They make uh, devices with Android. I honestly think they make maybe even better products uh, when it comes to the phones. So, you know, I think people will continue to use it. They, they have their favorites. I think Samsung's Galaxy line is one of the best, uh, and we'll continue to, to look at that. Now, my, my question is, and what, what kind of ticked me off then, isn't this the same argument that people had for years when the, the, whenever the idea came up about Microsoft building computers? You know, and, and it, yeah. makes, it makes me if laugh. If I remember correctly, yeah. Because Apple is an OS. They build their own machines. And then mm-hmm. they said, well, if Microsoft built computers and sold computers, um, there, was, there was arguments about that. Oh, Microsoft could never do that. You know, uh, why? Why then? You know, why, why, is, why is Microsoft left off as being this, this bad guy and not being able to do, maybe they don't want to, I don't know, but not being able to do that when everybody else is doing it, they're saying, well, wait a minute, we make an OS, we make a product, we need a hardware, so let's buy a hardware company. Yeah, true. It's the same thing. It literally is the same thing, but I don't know. I mean, it's just kind of hard to see what, what everybody else is going to think of it right now. 
All right. I just think it's going to piss a lot of people off. And but I think in the long, I think it's going to piss everybody off. But then I think they're going to get over it and they're going to be like, "Fine, you want to do this? We're going to compete with you." Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So, what's the idea then of uh, Palm being sold to another company to further develop WebOS and go up against Android? And then they stop developing WebOS. Yep. Yeah. But are, I think are, Palm are, is up in S Creek without a paddle. Well, no. What What if they came out with something a little different, a little better? Could Could anybody <laughs> Could anybody compete with Apple and Google? Could anybody compete in an operating system? Microsoft has tried. I don't know if they're they're able to. Could there be another one? No. So now I'm getting thumbs down from Justin. <laughs> Apple and Google. I mean, let's just hope for the sake of the world that Apple and Google. You know what happens if it sounds if so dramatic Google, for the sake of the world. <laughs> seriously, if Apple and Google became one company, do you know what their new name would be? Gapple? Skynet. <laughs> <laughs> seriously, <laughs> that's what I, that's, I, I seriously believe that. Uh, that yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the start of the. It's the beginning of the end. Well, you know that, that that's where you decide. Where where do you stop? I mean, we've only been playing this game if you think about it for about in the consumer end of things since what the the maybe mid nineties. <clears throat> you know, we've come a yeah. long oh. way. We've really yeah. come a long way uh, it, in in almost twenty years. Yes, we have. So I, I guess, but I always want more, too much. Oh heck yeah! The computer speeds. I mean, we're you know Moore's law has fall has been followed, and we are at speeds now. You can do things that are just amazing, and yet, you know, people still want it to be faster. They're never gonna get. They're never gonna want. They're never. They're never gonna say. You know what? I think this is fast enough for me for the rest of my life. I think this is gonna be good. No, they're no. always it's. Always got to be faster, bigger, smarter, better. Something else will come along that'll uh, tax it and uh, the ability to to make it faster. Well, you've seen that commercial. You were talking about commercials earlier. You saw the commercial where it talks about the, uh, I think it was called the Best Buy. It's the Best Buy buyback program. And then there's the guy that brings a 3D television into his house, and he's looking at the 3D. He's a little happy about it, and then he looks out and he sees it says 4D, and he's like, what the? F-? You know, so... It's this. It's the, that's the kind of thing that's happening right here. Is, is technology is increasing so fast? It doesn't matter what you buy. It's going to be outdated, and we've talked about this for years. It's going to be outdated tomorrow. Yeah. But I just don't think people are ever going to be happy with the the final product. I don't think they're ever going to say, "I think this is good enough for me." Do you think maybe that's why HP has had to say, "All right, maybe we'll be saying sayonara to the end of the business" because the consumers consumers will not spend the money. Yeah, I think a bus- not- I think a business will will look at it and say, well, we need a business server, we need something, and an IT guy is going to say, no, you need a you know you need this this uh, business class server, so you need to go out and you need to spend the six thousand dollars for the server, versus a consumer that says, boy, do I really need another computer for six hundred dollars? That they I think hold- it was a little, little bit more than that though, Andy. What's that? Yeah, I think it was consumers did not spend the money. Remember, it's right. been kind of tough for consumers, you know, where I uh, guess yeah. businesses in a sense may have budgeted for it. It's like you built they built up their war chest and they still got money. But consumers didn't have any money and don't plan on having any money. So they're like, well, yeah. let's get away from here. Well, plus, let's face it, the, the systems that have been coming out in the last couple of years have actually been pretty good systems. I mean, you could get an HP desktop and do very well with it and have it last you years and years. You know, it's like a, a car. Uh, you don't want the, the manufacturers of cars don't want you to have a car and hold it for 20 years. They want no. you to have it for four or five years and get rid of it. Maybe even Absolutely. less than that. Uh, the same thing goes for the PC market. They would rather have you have it for, you know, uh, two years, three years for the life of the OS, and then buy a new one. Mm-hmm. But people aren't doing that. They're holding on to them. They're they're hiring PC guys like me or, or Slick and and you know his buddy there to repair them, upgrade them, add memory, add hard drives. So then, so what do they do? They go back to their old model. Which is what Compact used to be, which which you know I I never liked that proprietary type of system where you know they built power supplies that only only were only sold by HP that were not you know standard spec or you know you could only put so much memory in them you could only have that size of hard drive in them, but now that that peripherals market for PCs is so huge that it's it's causing the manufacturers to have a problem. Yeah, that's why HP doesn't or Apple doesn't have that problem. Yeah, because I mean, really, they manufacture all their own stuff. Exactly. 
And uh, but the apples still last a long time. So are the, they're, but they're what they're doing is they're getting converts now. They, I think they realize selling to an Apple user, okay, that's good and everything. The real thing now is sell to the Windows user that's frustrated, that doesn't yeah. like the OS, that doesn't like the crashes, that doesn't like the, the virus problems. Well, but, that's exactly why they came out with all those Apple versus P. I'm a Mac, I'm a PC. You know, all those commercials. Yeah, where did those go, though? I, I think they just got tired of them, but I, I thought those were hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. They so were good. I, I, you know, I, just, I just wonder, and will we see... Dell Dell also does very well in the in the business uh, end of things with its business servers and business systems. Will we see Dell saying, eh, "I think we're going to do the same thing too"? I, no, Which will leave what I Toshiba so. Gateway. I could see Toshibas and Gateways and doing that kind of stuff, getting away from from it. But Dell Dell still has such a huge huge part of the consumer market, and not only consumer market. Dell made a multi year. Million, millions and millions of dollars contract with the government to supply the U.S. government, military, uh, government and the military, well, it's all the same thing, with Dell computers. Everywhere you look, if you go to a federal building, they're all Dells. Right. So they've just got millions of dollars coming in through Dell, and I don't think that's ever going to change. I think they've, they've got such a foothold on that that uh, if they were to give up designing their consumer market products, they'd lose a lot of money. Wouldn't you like to have uh, so much money that, you know, if you wanted to try something out in your business, you just do it? And if it fails, you just Steve say... Steve Jobs. Yeah, you just say, oh, well, it didn't work. Well, what are some things that haven't worked with Apple? Uh, I can't think nothing. Of, I mean, I can't think of it. I think they they fully I researched think, stuff. Yeah. Apple TV, okay, maybe that didn't jump on as as much well, as people had hoped. still trying to push it. And I like the way Apple pushes that kind of stuff because not only if, okay, if it doesn't work right... Okay, let's find a way to I- integrate it into every one of our products so it makes it work right. Well, um, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. What about uh, Google? Uh, there was a, a column. We have a link up on our website at techtalkradio.com. Uh, there was a column about Google uh, getting a, eul- a eulogy for Google Plus. I mean, is is it too early? Already. Is it is it too early to give a eulogy for Google well, Plus, or is it? Is it kind of like a radio programmers now that if it doesn't work, they say, "All right, let's try dump this and try something else." I don't know. Yeah. Good. See, I just think Google Plus may have come at the wrong time. I mean, again, it's like you and I trying to start up a new business, saying, "Hey, look, we got these new MP3 players, um, and it's uh, we're going to compete with Apple." I, I just I, Google came up at the wrong time, I think, or just too late. Period to try to compete with Facebook and Twitter. Now, Twitter. Oh. Twitter is the only one out there that, in my opinion, that could be the Facebook killer. Uh, you know, I started using Facebook. I loved it. Got really addicted into Facebook. Never was into Twitter. Started getting into Twitter. Now, I check Twitter before Facebook now because that's just – Facebook, it becomes the same things over and over and over again. Twitter, it's a constant news stream, and it's something new every time I look at it, and I love Twitter. And I think Twitter I can know. be the, o- the only thing out there to kill Facebook. I like Twitter too, but I, I think you have to take everything on there with a grain of salt. I mean, yeah, it'll give you – I mean, when, when a celebrity dies, it's easy to Google and see, okay, is that person really dead? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> and Although, see the post, I'm not dead yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know – um, I'll tell you what, I did see something that, uh, Something happened the other day. We had a, a storm move through Tucson, and it was a very bad storm, and uh, took de- took out about 18 power poles, and you know they closed one of the major streets here in Tucson for a couple of days. Um, but here was an instance where we tried to call the school. We couldn't get through to the school because they had lost power, uh, and they were on a uh, an IP phone system. Mm-hmm. So we had no access to them. My thoughts are how cool it would have been if somebody from the school could have tweeted, school canceled, you know, mm-hmm. other than Gloria sitting in the traffic for about uh, an hour and 45 minutes trying to take my daughter to school. If we could have gotten a tweet from the school as parents, we would have known. Oh, school's you canceled. Know, and, I think, and I think that's going to come with time. As, as Twitter becomes even more and more popular, I think more and more people are going to start to realize that they can use Twitter for that kind of stuff. And you'll find more schools and more people like that will start tweeting those kind of things. Well, it's not just that. It's just the, the speed of that information. and just. Well, yeah. And look at a news station. Like I talked about, you know, that I work for, for Fox. At the news station, we get a lot of our news stories and a lot of our ideas of what's happening locally and nationally from Twitter. 
Yeah, that's kind of interesting. It used to be you, you it was you. Somebody would have to weed wires. through millions of wires and press releases and all that. Uh-huh. Now, now you just look on Twitter. You go, oh, here's a story. Uh, example: uh, Yesterday, there was a story about a woman in Green Valley, ninety-three-year-old, snagged a sixteen-pound salmon in some derby and won. Uh, biggest biggest salmon they had 16 16.58 pounds uh, huh. but she was from our neck of the woods saw the story on twitter you know that uh, and so i was able to uh, follow through get a video and, and do all of that stuff whereas before i probably would not have heard about it till a couple days later yep. so yeah it does it does uh serve it does serve a purpose although um i just i don't i don't see it being the big facebook killer i don't think people interact as much it's all about interaction it's about how they connect with each other the circles idea for Google Plus is really nice. I like it and how easy that is. But I just I find that people don't want to do two things. They don't want to go, oh, Facebook and Google Plus, Facebook and Google Plus. Yeah, they just – exactly, because I have Google Plus and Facebook. I don't even use Google Plus. How, uh, how, hardly. How, many, because I, how often do you take like a review of something, like a review of a restaurant off Facebook or a movie, and do you take that for a grain of salt? Or do you – I mean, do you – I would try. You know, the funny thing is, I, I use would, Yelp for that. Well, uh, Yelp for a restaurant, right? Yeah. I would use a review of a movie from another Facebook user more than I would use a review from a critic. Why uh, online? Because, Why do you say that? Because I don't. I I never. You know, I don't understand who that critic is. Most of the connections on Facebook, okay. I might know, or they might be from the area, or they might have the similar interests. We may have similar views about it, and they're not in it trying to grandstand or make make a buck or whatever. They're just saying, "Hey, I went to this movie. I liked it. I went okay. and saw Source Code. Uh, I rented Source Code, and I liked it." The reason why somebody on Twitter that I know said Source Co- Code was really good. It's worth taking a look at. Okay, I did, understandable. And, I and you kind of know that person. You know what their likes are and stuff like that. So yeah, okay, right. It gives you the ability to to make a make a decision for yourself too. I mean, critics do the same, but I don't know. Critics just they let you down sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> sometimes, yeah. All right, so um, there you go. That's I, I, that's kind of the three biggest stories this week. Was is Google Plus dead? Uh, HP, uh, you know, what are they doing? And then uh, of course uh, Google itself buying uh, Motorola Mobility, which uh, surprised a lot of people. Motorola stocks went up with their announcement. Motorola yeah. stocks went up? Oh, yeah. Oh, I thought they went down. Hmm. No, Motorola stocks actually went up. Google stocks, not Google, um, HP stocks went down with their announcement. Oh, okay. That's the way it went. Okay. I thought yeah. it was all the other way around. What other, what, 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 I, I'm trying to think what else was big this week. Um, just some information about the iPad 3, possibly. Uh, it's it, People are getting more and more information as time goes on. Uh, iPad 3 is now looking to be more and more likely to have a retina display. And for those of you who don't know what a retina display is, it's just a very high quality um, screen. Uh, so if you look at the difference between the iPhone 3 and the iPhone 4, the iPhone 3 did not have a retina display. The iPhone 4 does. The iPad has never had a retina display, so it's, it's not quite as sharp as, as, uh, as it could be. But the new iPad 3 that they're talking about says more and more likely we're going to see a uh, retina display with the iPad 3. So that should be something interesting to see. Very cool. All right. And what else do we got here? Um, you got any Minecraft news? <laughs> oh, oh, okay. No, stop, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just something kind of funny. That's all. Oh, God. Remember okay. last week I just mentioned about how uh, the the guy, Marcus Pearson from Minecraft, was getting sued by Bethesda yeah. for the name uh, Scrolls. Do you remember I talked about that? Yeah, because we talked uh, something about Elder Scrolls. Yeah. Yeah, Bethesda is suing the maker of Minecraft, Marcus Pearson, because. His new game called Scrolls sounds too much like Bethesda's mega hit, The Elder Scrolls. Okay. No idea how it makes sense. But anyway, so Marcus Pearson took it public. Everybody's been supporting him, saying Bethesda doesn't have a case, blah, 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 blah. Marcus Pearson came out with this tweet about last week. Again, Twitter, tweet, right? Um, came out with a tweet that just blew me away. It was so funny. He said, look, I challenge you, Bethesda, to a three-on-three Quake Deathmatch. <laughs> He's like, this is how it's going to work. Your three best guys against our three best guys. Three, three rounds, 20 minutes per round. You pick the first map. We'll pick the next map. We'll randomize the third map. And if we win, you drop the lawsuit. If, we, if you win, we will change the name of our game. And he said, 
if you think I'm serious, if you wonder if I'm serious, yes, I'm serious. And so that made huge news all over. People were like, oh, Bethesda, come on, step up your game, you know, go play some Quake. And yeah. it was kind of funny to see how everybody all of a sudden was talking about how they want to settle everything, lawsuits and settle fights in the Quake arena. I haven't heard, I haven't heard from Quake in years. <laughs> I and now like they're that talking idea. about it again, saying people want to go fight lawsuits out in the arenas and quake deathmatch. I like that idea. I think that works. I think they should do it. Yeah. I think it'd be great. It would be great for Quake. I mean, because they'd get a lot of play. They could actually make a lot of money off it. Both Bethesda and uh, uh, Marcus Pearson could make some money off it by hosting an internet webcast of the match. I think it'd make. I think well, it'd be great yeah, for both yeah, time, both terms. Good. Yeah. I kind of so, like that. All right, I, 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 I've got a question. Maybe you know of something along this line that would work as a solution. Um, yeah. Somebody was asking me the other day. They said they had the iPhone, and they have the iPhone on a you know on a little uh, plug-in charger next to their iMac, and they get SMS text messages on their iPhone. Okay. And they said it's kind of a pain because you have to take the phone off the jack and you have to <clears> enter <throat> your message and send it back. Why? Is why there, take it off the jack? You mean? Like it's like a, a physical plug, or is it got the little cord plugged into it? It's got a cord plugged into that, and then they plug that onto that. All right. You should have to take it off just to text. Yeah, he says you have to take it off to text. He said, is there anything where it will allow that information from the phone to appear on your desktop so that you can a- answer your SMS text messages or your, or your phone text messages, I should say, on your desktop? I, you said, know I don't what? know of anything. I, I don't know. I have never. That's a, that's a very interesting question. Very good uh, observation but i don't know if there's an app for that i don't know because you're kind of dealing with i mean yes it's an apple iphone but at the same time now you're talking about uh you're getting into the at&t or verizon aspect of it and i just don't i don't know if there would be an app for that or not so not sure you could you could do it with google voice you could couldn't you okay mm-hmm. okay so yeah, what, what you'd have to do is set up a google voice account number and just have that forward to yeah, but then you you take away your main number, right? Is that how that works? Well, in in the in the Sprint Google you hide Voice your main world, number. You can't go either way. Yeah, in in the Sprint Google Voice where you could do either way. You can make your Sprint phone number your your primary number or your Google Voice number your primary number. Trust me on this. I've been through this this month. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't it be Wouldn't it be great um, though if if Apple could do that, where they could just suddenly have any text messages coming to your iPhone? Also appear on your iMac. Yeah, they should work with AT and T on it. It would be cool. I just don't. I've never heard of it being possible. I don't know. It'd be interesting. Mm-hmm. You should propose that idea. Okay. Or, or yeah, maybe hire a developer and make an app for that. Yeah. Make some money off of it. Uh, what were go you going to say? You were going to say slick. Uh, <laughs> no, go ahead, Andy. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Sure. I could do that <laughs> right after I do this. <laughs> Not All like right. you got enough on your plate right now. Uh, yeah, I do. Actually, it's a buffet. Oh, <laughs> I got to pick and choose which ones I'm going to do. All nice. right. All right. Well, good. Well, we'll wrap it up for the, for this week. Uh, sorry about the technical issues from earlier. Uh, we'll be back next week uh, with more of Tech Talk Radio. I got to tell you, uh, we did get the green screen in uh, from Westcott Lighting. Uh, we're not using it, of course, because we're not doing the show from that location. But uh, it is really sweet looking. Uh, comes with a couple of lights, a, a ten foot by nine foot green screen. Uh, comes with the hooks to hang it up, and some software as well. Plus a great ins- uh, instructional booklet from the NAPP on how to use it. Um, we put together some photos the other day with it, so we're really looking forward to try it out with video, which we're going to try this week. So I don't know, Slick. You said you might try and come by, right? Yeah. All right. So yeah. if you can come by this week, we'll we'll set up the camera and give it a shot and uh, try and see how it looks with the green screen. You Should know what, a- though? The garage has flavor. What's that? The garage has flavor, though. I'm going to miss that. Well, I know it does, but I think it would be fun to try and see how how that works with uh, with that. I, I don't want to every, do everything with a green screen, but it may, might be neat for some videos we want to integrate into the into our uh, webcast. Yeah, and then, we're you know, in the Himalayas. <laughs> <laughs> we're sitting on the beach. <laughs> Literally, and I'm sitting here at home. <laughs> Actually, you are. You could be on the beach, couldn't you, Justin? Oh well, yeah, I could. I could take my laptop out there and get to get a WiMAX card or you know 4G Wait. card and do the show from the beach. You know, what? we ought to try that one day. Uh, each one of us at a different location. <laughs> where Justin, <laughs> that would be interesting. Inside, you you do it from the beach in San Diego. Uh, you do it from Mount Lemon there, uh, Slick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That would be cool. Or, that would be cool. Somebody. Yeah. Somebody's going to have to pr- provide me with the card because I don't have the card. 
the uh, the wi you know the Wi-Fi card or something. Slick, I, I think you could go over to Mira Vista. Do <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was just thinking, you know, there's somebody I'm sure is going to leave their back door unlocked. I'll just have to just keep, you know, keep trying. To find it. That's all. Not a problem. Like That's I usually funny. do. Yeah, that works out good. All right, we'll wrap it for this week. Uh, Tech Talk Radio. Justin off to go do a three mile run. Good luck. Thank you. Promise I don't see you any thinner. Shut up. <laughs> I could say the same about you, buddy. <laughs> I'm not trying. <laughs> oh yeah, true. Yeah. You're doing all the workout for us. <laughs> yeah, you feel skinnier just hearing about what I do, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez, I've got to go find a dentist. I, I can't even chew, so I'm I'm on soups. So who knows? Maybe that'll work. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right, guys. Well, we'll I, see you next week. But yeah, I think we really should try to do that, uh, the, the, the location thing. I think that would be so cool. Well, well, we'll try and set that up. Maybe we'll have a, a video this I week. I could do it from the panda cam at the San Diego Zoo. I can go sit in the panda exhibit. No, go sit in the gorilla exhibit. Oh, yeah, that'll that'll be great. <laughs> I'm sure I'll rise of the planet of the apes part two. <laughs> Where <laughs> in the world is one of these three guys? <laughs> oh, yeah. There you go. Go find Carmen. She's somewhere in San Diego. <laughs> There you go. I like it. All right. That's that's it for Tech Talk Radio. I'm Andy Taylor. I'm Slick. And I'm Justin. See you next week. Thanks for tuning in.